Yo, 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 guys, and welcome back to another video on this channel. Today, I wanted to share a really neat Golang library, which I've been using recently. It allows us to do some really powerful JSON decoding. But you might be wondering why this is necessary. Doesn't Golang already have a beautifully simple way to decode JSON into a struct? The problem comes when we have dynamic JSON that might change, maybe depending on other fields in the struct. Say that we have this settings object here that we want to decode. But as you can see, we have different settings depending on the type. We have short and we have form and the short has X and Y, the form has a form ID. So how would we go about this using JSON on Marshall? Well, we would have to decode it twice. First to get access to the type field and then secondly map that type field to the correct struct type quite wasteful, right? Map structure works by first decoding our JSON into a very generic map, a map with key type string and value type any. And we can then feed this map into map structure and decode it into whatever we want. So this is not limited to JSON by any means. Maybe you have an object of that ancient format XML lying around. It works equally well to decode that with map structure. So first we go ahead and install map structure just like any other library with go get. Then we get the JSON handy that we want to decode and notice here the map string any type that we decode into. We can then use map structure dot decode and just like with JSON pass in a pointer to the struct that we want to decode it to. So in this case, we are decoding into the short settings, the settings variable that we have. Now, this is a bit boring since we could just do this directly with JSON on Marshall. So it's time to get dynamic. And as you can see, we now have this type field short once more. First, we decode into this input map here. Input, we just unmarshal that with JSON, just like normal. And then we switch over that type. So depending on the value of the type. So we have case short and we have case form. Now we have two different variants, two different struct types. We have short settings and we have form settings. And then we use map structure to decode accordingly. And if we print out the results, we can see that we get the correct type here. Whenever I pass in that type short, we decode into the short settings struct. Now you might be wondering what happens if I were to forget to add a field to my JSON or maybe included a field that does not exist in the struct. And it's going to behave pretty similar to JSON on Marshall since Golang has a default values. So those default values will be set instead. If we have this Y here, it would be set to zero and the set simply would not exist in the struct. It simply is not part of the struct, so it will not be decoded. So you might also want to deal with embedded structs and embedded structs is when you have another struct inside of a struct. So we expect this struct to have that data. We expect that short widget struct to have the data that is in the widget as well. And this is incredibly useful if we want less code duplication. We have this widget, we have these fields, ID and type, and we don't want to duplicate them. We can just include that, we can embed that widget struct since that is the format that we have thought out. Now, if you want this to work for the top level, let's say we have ID type and X and Y coming in as the JSON, we're going to have to configure map structure to know that is actually supposed to be on the top level. Otherwise, you would have to have a widget key as well and send in the widget settings in that widgets object. But if you want everything in a flat structure, everything at the same level, so to speak, then we can use something known as squash. We can actually add a field tag here known as map structure squash. And what this does is actually squash those incoming fields. We have ID and type and they will be part of the top level JSON object. And this will be passed into the widget object with the help of map structure. So as you can see here, we have short widget and we have form widget and we have everything at the top level. We have type short, X and Y, everything is in the same object. We can still reuse that widget struct that I was talking about, which we can also see to the right here. When I run this, we have a short and the type is a short widget. 
if you want to make this even more dynamic, we could actually bring in reflection here. So instead of having to write a million different case statements, we could actually use reflection for this. So we can actually create a map here called widgets where we map a string to a reflect type. So we map the short to the short widget struct and we map form to the form widget struct. Then we can use reflection down here. So we first check if the incoming type is actually valid, if it can be found in this widgets map. So if reflect type and OK is true, then we create a new instance of this reflect type. And then we use interface since this is actually returning a pointer. We want to dereference that pointer to get the value. And then we can just use map structure as well. So this is really convenient because we only have to add another entry to our map. We just add a bunch of entries to our map. And we don't have to write a billion different cases to our switch statement. So how can we configure map structure? Well, there are loads of different configuration options available. So to set up a custom config, we need to create our own decoder object and pass in a decoder config struct to. So as you can see, I create a new instance of this decoder config struct. In here, we actually need to have a field called result. So instead of doing decoder decode with with a result, we actually send in the pointer into the actual config. So we have a pointer to the object that we want to decode into. And then we can configure it with things like error unused or error unset. And what this does is simply allow us to cause an error whenever we are missing a field or we had added something excessively. So this is really an advantage here because we can throw an exception if a field should exist but didn't exist or if it was added excessively. So as you can see here, if we forgot to add the ID field, it will complain has unset fields ID. Or if we added something that simply does not exist in the struct, like this said here, it will say has invalid keys said. And there are also some other configurations available, but all of that will happen through the decoder config struct. Map structure also has the ability to add custom decoders. And this is necessary if we have a struct with a field that we can't really decode from JSON. If we have a custom data structure or a custom type, such as a UUID, for example. So there's actually a UUID package that you might be using for your unique IDs. And this would normally exist in the JSON as a string, but that's not what it actually represents in the Golang backend, so to speak. So in order for that to work, we actually need to create a custom decoder. So as you can see, we have a widget struct here with the ID property that has the type UUID.UUID. And that is not a primitive Golang type. We can see if we try to decode this, that source data must be an array or slice, since that is what is actually stored as in the backend of the UUID package. But we got a string, so we need to define a custom decoder. So the parameters that we have here are two reflect types, and this is the incoming type and the expected type. We also have an interface and any type, which is the value that is actually being passed in. So how do we define a custom decoder for UUID? Well, we do something like this. We have from reflect type to reflect type and then the value. We check if the to type is reflect type of UUID. And if it is, well, then we are trying to decode into a UUID. And then we check if this value that is passed in is actually a string. So if it is a string, then we use the UUID parse function of the UUID package and return it. So whatever we want to return here is the actual value that we decode into. And then an error if an error occurred, of course. And this decode hook is actually run for every single field. So we can provide custom logic for all of our fields, depending on the incoming type and the expected type. But for this purpose, we want to check simply if this is the UUID type, then we want to parse it as a UUID and return that instead. And notice here, if it's not a UUID, we want to return the value as it is. We just want to pass it on. Maybe if you were to have other decoders, then you would want to pass it on into the other decoders. So that's all for this short video on map structure. I hope you found it useful. I really find this to be an amazing library, which allows me to do a lot of custom dynamic JSON decoding in various formats. 
So if you found this useful, feel free to like the video. Also feel free to join my Discord channel if you want to be part of the community. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.